What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And after watching the first four episodes of the Fallout TV show, I gotta say, I'm pretty intrigued. Based on the early reviews, the fans have loved the overall performance of the show, but the big question is, is it just hype? Does the show actually give us a real feeling of the Fallout franchise? And can this dude actually smell out of his nose? In the first half of the video, me and the crew will give our non-spoiler review discussing what we liked and what we hated. In the second half of the video, we will give it our spoiler opinion on the overall plot points of the first half of the show. But before we jump in, if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. You can also support us by joining our crew by becoming an official member. Is the Fallout show actually good? Let's jump into it. Let's jump into our good and when i think about this show one thing that i loved right off the bat was the fact that this atmosphere was just transcendent compared to really most other tv shows that we've been watching from game adaptations and i gotta say comparing itself to all of them i think fallout lands it probably more consistently maybe on levels of the last of us when it comes to how well this universe is and i think what makes this unique is because it seems like it's one of those types of experiences that you know, it's a lot more grander in scale of what we've seen in a lot more other adaptations to this point. And because Fallout is just such a unique story or just such a unique experience, it hits it all on the right spot, being in California, being this nuclear Fallout, seeing all these kind of animals and, and just mutations and people that were all awry. I feel like this, this atmosphere that we are put into the show is just like outrageously fun. And I feel like that's kind of the best part for me so far in these first four episodes. But Haki, what is your good here? Yeah, I have a few here. I have, you know, the action, a lot of good, uh, you know, gun scenes, a lot of gore, uh, but the environment, kind of like you said, uh, great opening scene, uh, really captured the kind of apocalyptic vibe, um, <clears throat> you know, outside the vault. And then, um, you know, the music, I, I thought the, the music was absolutely fantastic. In the game, the music was great too, just a kind of a great music error uh, that they, they captured and was able to bring to this show as well, so. Angelica, what is your good here? Yeah, the atmosphere is absolutely a home run, especially on the first four episodes. Um, and again, we're going to, right when this is done, we'll be watching the next four. So this is our thoughts on the first four. And they really nailed that atmosphere, um, similar to the game. Now, Fallout, as many people who have probably played or followed Fallout, you know, they each have their own kind of story. So they're kind of taking their own story years later um, than the Fallout games. Um, but one thing that they absolutely nailed was the atmosphere. I mean, the wasteland itself, the characters, the different factions feel like it. Now, they don't have those main characters like a Master Chief, like a Joel or an Ellie that they have to follow and mimic. So they had the freedom to kind of create their own, but they captured the magic with the music and the, you know, the dark humor. And there's some absolutely unhinged and wild parts um, that, you know, some things I wish I didn't see. But... You know, for the overall aspect, they did a really good job of just capturing so many nuggets and the vibe of Fallout in this show. And with the good, we do need to talk about the bad. And when I think about the bad, there's really not a lot of things oh. that come to my mind, that, honestly, because I feel like they do capture everything you would want to see in a Fallout game adaptation. But if I was looking at really detailed specifics, I, I feel like when you look at the three main characters with Lucy, Maximus and the ghoul, Maximus kind of seems like the afterthought where he kind of seems like he is clearly the lesser of the three characters and maybe it's because the second half of the season is really going to pick up more steam with him kind of getting more scenes to expose kind of his more character development but he seems more like a shallow character compared to the other two which seem a lot more diverse and and have a lot more detail to put into their character development so far in the show remember this is only the first half you know, granted, they, they might give you a whole episode about Maximus in episode five, and we have no idea because we stopped ourselves from watching past this part. But the idea is, is that mm -hmm. up until this point, you know, Maximus just seems like the guy that, you know, he has his he has his motivation, but it's almost like a wow, that's kind of a dull motivation compared to the other two, which have a lot more driven with their goals and what their mission is going to be. So I feel like that's kind of the only issue I see so far because everything else with atmosphere looks fantastic. So, Aki, what is your bad here? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. Not uh, not a lot of bad. Uh, they do have a lot of uh, pretty deep stories going at the same time. Kind of like you said, 
three kind of main characters. Um, so we have to kind of see if they can kind of keep that going, uh, keep it interesting, and connect them, you know, because they I'm sure they're all going to connect, um, you know, at some point. So um, hopefully they, they continue it. It is a very interesting show through, you know, the first four episodes. So, um, you know, it started to slow a little bit, but um, I definitely think it's going to pick up a little bit. Uh, we're definitely going to see some serious action uh, in the next couple episodes. And Angelica, what is your bad here? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Pacing, I think it's always tough when a show does uh, multiple main characters, right? We've seen multiple shows try to do this, some of them successful and some of them absolutely failures. And I don't think this show does a poor job of it. Just compared to other aspects of it, this one feels a bit lacking behind. And it's really the Maximus and the Brotherhood of Steel that I just feel is shallow right now um, in the first four episodes. Um, and, and they're such an important faction, Fallout lore. Um, and just, you know, they're such a cool group when you, you know, talk about it, the games. But right now, it just feels like the most shallow of the three. And I'm interested to see even the Vault 32, which we're not going to dive into spoilers until the next part. The Vault story feels a little bit more enticing than the Brotherhood of Steel right now um, for the first four episodes. So um, that's the only one that feels pretty much lagging uh, behind a little bit. Um, there are some wild and wacky moments, but that's part of kind of the, you know, like the dark humor and the wacky moments might not be satisfying to everyone. But there is a certain charm to it that might not hit with everybody, but it did hit for me. But I could see if people were a little, you know, eh, I'm not really feeling the humor. But um, really, it's the pacing to me that that is probably the lacking aspect of the show so far. Yeah. And with that being said, let's jump into our final verdict. So remember, this is a a review of the first four episodes. So we're going to kind of give an overall rating for the first half of the season. And this is a tough thing. I mean, when you think about doing episode by episode, it's a lot easier to narrow down the goods and bads of one thing and give it a, a solid rating. So when I'm thinking about all first four episodes, I mean, maybe I'm going to sound crazy here, but I think I'm going to go closer to a nine. I think this is a great showing of a game adaptation to the levels of The Last of Us. And I think a lot more people might might honestly feel a little bit more enticed to watch the Fallout because it's it's a different story than the actual game. I mean, that's unique story. Not saying Last of Us is not. It's, it's a great story, but it's like if you're a fan of The Last of Us, you want to see a, a shot for shot. The Last of Us is the closest thing you're going to get. Fallout is the world of Fallout, but it's like its own story. So it's like you Fallout fans are going to say, hey, this is a new story, but it's in my, in my favorite franchise. So they're going to jump in there, right? For new fans of the series, they got some corny ass jokes. They got some weird things going there, a whole lot of violence and good storytelling so far. And I feel like that's all recipes for success. And when you think about Amazon, the boys, this is exactly makes sense to why that direction, that writing it fits the boys exactly, which is why when I heard that they were having the director added onto this, I was like, hey, this is literally the boys, right? And so the gore is pretty on point with the boys, it's, yeah. it's literally <laughs> identical to that. And and that's why when I think about a nine for me, it makes perfect sense. The, they they have and I, I maybe I'm harping on this. Maybe it's like I, they have having rent free in my head, but the Halo show can't even match the levels of of intenseness and fun that this is because of the fact that yeah. they created a brand new story and it's fun, it's unique, and it, it keeps you enticed. Like I, it was really difficult for me not to click the next episode of this show because I wanted to see what happens next. And they, and they ended the first half with a bang with, with a really good scene with the ghoul. And, you know, we'll talk a lot about it in the plot summary, but I think it's a nine for me. This is a great show so far. Hopefully they continue that in the second half, but I'm I'm a fan. And a Fallout, and we'll talk a lot more about it later on. I play the Fallout games, and it's a it's a great game, great game series. But you know this does this does open it up for people that are not maybe interested in playing long ass games like Fallout can be, but want to experience the Fallout feel. Right, this is definitely that that feeling for me. So, uh, hockey, what is your overall rating for this? Yeah, this is where the silver timeline works in this universe here. Um, you know, they kind of made their own story, but definitely in the universe of Fallout, we talk about that environment. Um, you know, they, they really set it up in that first scene um, and throughout the entire, um, you know, four episodes that we watched, um, you know, you were just kept in that environment the entire time, whether you were seeing, you know, uh, the stuff that happened in the vault or, uh, you know, outside, but 
Uh, for this one, guys, for me, 8.6. It's going to be a little, little conservative. I wanted to go a little higher, um, but I definitely want to see them continue. I definitely think this can be uh, in the nines. It can definitely compete uh, with The Last of Us. So um, I'm excited uh, from what I've seen. So uh, definitely excited to see the next uh, four to go. Angelica, what is your rating here? I mean, I'm close. Well, I'm with you guys. 8.5 for me, and I feel like this is an enjoyable show for both Fallout fans and for non-Fallout fans, for people who have no idea um, what this show is about. Um, but what they do, and here's the one thing I will, you know, and I'm not really defending the Halo show, but it's it's harder to, to mimic like these main characters like the Master Chief, like some of these other main characters in video games. Um, the Fallout doesn't necessarily really have that and they kind of stepped away from it. So, but the thing they had to nail was the environment and they absolutely did and the vibe of Fallout. And what they did is they just captured kind of, you could see these characters and we talked about it in other ones where you don't have to follow the lore exactly. They They make it feel like these characters belong in this universe and that's what they do very very well um i mean i really like a lot of the characters um that we talked about it the violence is gory um it's not this high-paced violence right but what it is is you know we see more guys in in the titan gear than we did uh the spartans in the halo um in the halo gear so far in the first four episodes right so you know like they they do they give you a little bit of everything and and the pacing even though i talked about it not being as great as the other things they still do a really solid job of making you want to see more of multiple different plot lines yeah and i feel like that's kind of the biggest thing i take away from this as well is that this is its own story now there's a lot of discussion that, that hey this does fall Are into a similar canon, right this yeah the, this is after the games. this is canon right. and there's a lot of Hall fallout fans out there that are saying well that does coincide with new vegas since california vegas they're traveling in that area what happens to new vegas is this the, the, in vegas or not yeah, so th- there's a whole kind of discussion on that, and oh, that you know, part two, come yeah, see that'll part be, two. Yeah, that'll be the part two yeah. discussion we'll have. But if you like this type of content, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. We also have memberships on. So you can join the Marsman crew by hitting that join button. That is a great moment for us to be able to have you part of the crew. So we are not going to be jumping into our spoiler discussion. We're going to talk about all the plot points, give you the good and the bad. So we'll see you out in the spoiler discussion there so spoiler discussion guys this is really a good time for us to really jump into all the different episodes and really just kind of give our overall feelings about each one and i'm going to give a now four episodes of information it's a whole lot of things so what i'm going to do is kind of condense it in some major events that have happened and kind of get our overall feeling about it but i want to give a little context we're gamers right this is this is a game adaptation we have all at least experienced fallout in some capacity you know, I played a few of the Fallout games. Aki, I know you played a few of the games when you were back in high school. Angelica, you've had experience with Fallout as well. And so we're all kind of coming away from this as fans of the series have played the games, but not necessarily like to the levels of like, we are the floor diehards yeah, that we are going like, slamming the table. Yeah, yeah, like Halo was, was, our, was our child. We grew up, uh, we were kids playing it. So we were more fanatics, I guess you would say, of Halo. Fallout, we, we experience the games, but it's 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 its own unique piece, right? And what's good yeah. about Fallout is that every game it follows its own story. So it's almost like this is just following in that, that same tradition where this is a brand new story within the world of Fallout and then we get to experience it firsthand. And uh, so right off the bat, I, I got to say this intro to the series was fantastic. And basically it takes place exactly the way that every game took place right in the 50s back when you know technology's advanced and everything but it, it kind of revolves around our, our main actor he's he's you know he's he's an actor he's playing at a child's you know party doing his rope he's playing as a cowboy you know he plays at it as a cowboy in, in many movies in the 50s so you know he's been hired basically to show up and just do some tricks and you know one of the coolest scenes i think definitely got me uh uh it got me excited and i think uh you know well his name is walton goggins the main actor here he's he's doing a lot of stuff He's a he's a good actor, but while the dads are making fun of him, oh, can you do the the thumbs up? And he was like, no, nah, I'd rather not. The thumbs up is a callback to the Fallout series you see in the main logo all a thousand Vault different times. Boy. Yeah, the, yeah, you know he Vault Boy and everything, and uh, and so one of the best lines is you know he's like when I was in the Marines, you know they taught us a, a little trick about if uh, you put your thumb up to the bottom to the explosion, and the bomb is is you know smaller than your thumb. Then you gotta turn and run, and but if it's bigger than your thumb, 
then there's no point in running. And, you know, to his daughter saying that, and he was like, I thought that was like, such a good scene. And literally the next scene, the daughter's like, I was like, there's, we all knew it was going to happen. Fallout, right? But it was almost like one of those scenes where you're like, oh no. And then you see it happen and then Fallout, right? It just shows we're jumping right into this, right? And then right from there, we get introduced. This whole episode was all about introducing your main character. Right, that's the whole point of this episode entirely. So then we jump to Lucy, who is a vault dweller. Pretty standard stuff. If you played any of the Fallout games, basically shows you this this like dystopia where everything's perfect. They're play, living under the ground, you know, playing all the you know the great wildlife that's outside of the cornfield. It's almost like a fantastic apple pie, like 50s like lifestyle. And she's basically vying so that she can go get married to a member of Vault 32, who is basically someone she has no idea who they are. It's a, it's a tradition that if you're in Vault 33, you can connect it to 32 and 31. And, you know, and so, you know, they're meeting this Vault 32 the first time. She uh, is now, you know, officially going to be married to Monty, who is his new guy. And is right off the bat, you can tell there's something wrong here. Like, these guys are all, like, padded up. And you're like, this is not what Vault Dwellers are supposed to be looking like. And you knew right off the bat, like, there's something weird here. And oh, I, one thing I got to say... Fallout has added in a lot of weird things. And what's funny is, you know, because Lucy, it's like she, uh, the guy, this guy's name is, uh, is like Chet or something like that, or Chad or something. He, he's, you know, he's really heartbroken that he's got to give, you know, Lucy's like her, his girlfriend up to get married. And then she's like, you know, I mean, we're cousins and you, you had know, making ass fun and all. But I was just like, cousins? I'm like, are you? There's some incest going on in here. Yeah, yeah, throw a little bit of incest in there. You got Game of Thrones incest in, it. but hey, that's only the beginning because there's, there's a bunch of weird stuff they throw in there. But what I think is what I think is a good moment is you know Lucy comes off as one of those people that's just ignorant, but she's but she's like a she's like a secret badass. Like they, she's trained. She knows the hand to hand combat. She knows how to use a gun very well based on what they showed in just a few scenes. Like one thing that I think a lot of shows struggle with is exposition is really exposition where they just start talking about a lot of stuff about life and everything and so that we can understand the character. But instead of doing that, they show us. So she's like, oh yeah, I'm like not bad at shooting. And then she's literally pinpoint hitting everything on the bullseye to show that she's a badass at shooting. Or yeah, I, I do physical activity and she's dropping dudes and doing like suplexes yeah. on them. And I'm like, like at uh, the same you get two or something. Yeah, it's just like, so she, you're seeing that she is a capable person. It's just she is ignorant. She is unsure of the real reality. And eventually, when the raid, when they're all raiders and they start attacking everybody, after her brother realizes that Vault 32 is utterly destroyed, there's something wrong here. All of a sudden, now hell breaks loose. They start attacking, and we start getting right into the goriness. Right, Lucy starts. Yeah. You know, Lucy gets stabbed. Lucy then slams a glass into the guy into Monty's and face, she, face, just completely off. shattered half his face. And now there's a bunch of people dying. They're getting pregnant lady getting stabbed in the face of the fork. And then she's unloading people with machine guns. Like we're talking some wild stuff going on. Well, here. 50s music is yeah, well, if you have fifties dystopian music is playing in the background. Oh, music was so good. I was just it like, was. it was it, now granted, they they find the best songs to really depict this like fifties, like, like dystopian, yeah, fallout. Big, yeah perfect fallout one. atmosphere. Yeah. And and so all this stuff's happening, and eventually. And then the, the whole Raider scene is it culminates with, you know, the Raider leader, Moldaver, who basically gets people hostage and then, you know, says, hey, you can choose your daughter or these people. And it was weird because he puts his daughter into the the, bomb, the the door closed area, you know, and like it basically picks her to stay alive. And then he gets taken hostage and then the lady sets the bomb. All those people get away anyway. And so is the daughter, is Lucy safe. So it means like you, you really didn't pick. It's just like you're coming. <laughs> it's just you're coming with me. Yeah. You just come, just come like with me. You or your daughter. I, I honestly and thought that they were just gonna kill everybody. I was like, all right, that would have made sense. But like they literally just turned the bomb on. Everyone got in. She was safe. It's like you, so. There's not really a pick. It's just you're coming with me. Like that's basically what, what ended up happening. Now it makes an actual interesting connection because it directly connects to like Fallout 4 and how that game started, where oh, your yeah. child was taken hostage by a random person and you're stuck in the freezing chamber like i'm gonna come after you like that's how it starts so it's a very similar mm -hmm. connection they build there not just opposite basically uh and, and so from there then we start jumping into our last character right, the knew her mom that was one thing yeah that, that was yeah, that was the thing like, you look like your mother or something yeah like. you look like your mother and so it means like hey this lady there's some secrets behind her 
she knows the mom like all that blah blah so there's a lot of history that we're still learning and obviously remember this is only the first four episodes so we are the history is already out we just haven't watched it yet so um the idea is is that you know now we jump right from there to the last character uh maximus right and so maximus is part of the brotherhood of seal one of the badass groups in fallout I remember back when I first uh, interacted with the Brotherhood of Seal, I was like, these guys are, are legit. And then I find out they're they're pretty screwed up on their own in the game. And I was like, oh, I did not think that was going to happen. But a lot of the yeah. contention that people had about the Brotherhood of Steel was the, the depiction of how close they are to religion. And that was actually depicted in the earlier Fallout games that they were, they have this religious connection. Uh, so a lot of people were like unsure about that, whether how much that should have been, how much less it should have been. But Maximus is basically, it seemed he was a orphaned, basically a, a, as a kid orphan, taken in by the Brotherhood of Steel. He's now basically trained. He has his ideology. He has his love for the Brotherhood and, and, the, and the, 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 the knights that are all wearing the T-60 armor. And he wants to be one of those people. He wants to be selected as, uh, as a squire, basically for one of these knights. His friend gets tape picked as, as a squire. And then eventually, you know, as he's putting on a boot, she gets sliced. Her ankle gets sliced by a razor blade. And one of the funniest, dumbest things I thought possible was she starts screaming, oh, my God, my ankle. And then Maximus, you know, oh, she takes off her boot. And then instantly he gets arrested. Like, why would he get arrested if why would he be the one that does it if he literally was the one pulling it off her leg? Like, oh, my God, how, why is this here? But they arrest him and now they're interrogating him. And th what's interesting is they start creating this dynamic that Maximus is just kind of the bitch. Like he's I'm cleaning toilets. Uh, while all my friends are getting better treatment than me, and I don't know why he's getting his ass he's kicked on by his peers. Yeah, he's getting he's getting his ass kicked on the daily by a bunch of nerdy looking you know brotherhood members. Yeah. And, you know he's getting his, he's getting wedgies. And it's just like yeah, he's dudes beating their meat in the barracks. Yeah, I know. Then he has to watch his dudes <laughs> beating their meat. I know. Like, I, mean, some guy it. I mean, like, dude, it's, it, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. And, and so, and so, eventually, when they start interrogating, which I thought was a pretty cool scene. They basically yeah. were like interrogating him, almost like saying, oh, you definitely did it, didn't you? And you got Titus, who is the knight standing behind him, like trying to scare him. And he's like, I I, I didn't do it. And, and then he says, I will give my life for the Brotherhood. And then the guy's like, oh, good boy. And then he picks him to be the replacement squire uh, for his friend that can now do this. And it was interesting because I, you know, when I watched it, I thought it was a good, it was a kind of a good scene because it kind of shows you that they want like, and they want items they want weapons that's what they want they don't want people they just want weapons to do their will no matter what so now maximus is the squire and now he gets to fill his dream as being this guy's bitch basically and bring around all of his equipment and uh and so when he goes out you know that's that's kind of the, the really the last part for maximus on that point and now they're going off with with titus and, and then it ends with the reveal of the ghoul right and you know a really interesting thing here is the ghoul is that the ghouls in Fallout basically have to survive by ingesting drugs to keep their nervous system and bloodstream going because they essentially they were heavily impacted by the radiation poisoning and you know they basically have lost their nervous system have lost their you know normal capabilities of any human so now they basically either have to eat other ghouls eat people eat animals um, if they don't ingest drugs they will become like rabbit right so that that's Not kind feral, of right? yeah feral, feral, ghoul. feral ghouls right and that's kind of the the so this ghoul character is now in a coffin and is kind of is is basically drugs are being pumped into his system to keep him alive and then a bunch of random bandits show up to say we got to get this guy out to help us do a job and uh this ghoul comes out and says, oh he'll he'll eat this chicken if he's if he's rat if he's feral shows up and if you who saw the trailers the main character from the beginning the actor is the ghoul right now he's just 200 years later he's he's clearly face is all messed up he's a ghoul he's got no nose he looks like voldemort right and now you know he's he's and he shows up he's and he's a badass he's straight up badass the guy wants to take him for a job and he just kills all three of them and he's like all right then i'm walking away i'm doing my own thing and he leaves and that's how the first episode ends and it sets up everything right so the first episode i thought was great it showed us all three protagonists i think for the first episode it was one of the best ones to me yeah. and it really it did a great job giving you the context of what's going on right and i feel like that's that's the whole point of of that intro right i think that's kind of the key thing that i always kept in mind and now there's a whole lot of other things that are kind of happening like the the second episode really i guess you would say is a little bit slower and the idea was that episode two 
shows the, the, the person that they're all hunting for, which is the scientist. And yeah. basically, the scientist, uh, it, for the first four episodes, I'm trying to remember, I think he's from Vault Tech, essentially, uh, basically one of those uh, those companies that are used for investigating or, or really, um, basically, just really experimenting on people and animals to try to, you know, understand this post post fallout society and how they can further this this you know world to the maybe elevation. make it better yeah to fix all the radiation issues that are currently happening and so this episode starts with some real messed up stuff where you got dogs being incinerated in the very beginning you know and and this guy takes a takes, takes a puppy to train to use for himself and then he starts developing this 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 i this okay, yeah this chip to put into his brain that he wants to try to get to somebody that can use to fix the future or fix this radiation problem that's currently happening and one of the funniest one of, one of the funniest things i think i've ever seen was well first the uh, cx 404 is the dog wipes out the guy and i think it was pretty funny yeah, was the but, doctor. he's gonna pull yeah, the alarm he yeah, and he just up. rips his blood neck out like all right i'm good now and then the dog and then now probably the funniest thing though is as he's leaving you got a turret gun shows up and is aiming at the scientist, and it was the slowest walk I've ever seen. And he's dodging every just bullet, every bullet him. just missing every shot as oh. he's running past them. And I was that just was like, I know, I know he's an, I know he's an older man. Like I know he's an older guy. And I, like, hey man, can you just run as fast as possible? And it's just him like a slow jog, like a slow, <laughs> like a little faster walk. And the turret gun's just missing every bullet. I'm like, I wish that the in Fallout the the turrets were that that crappy. I wish they were that oh, slow. Yeah. It would have been fantastic to be able to fight against that. Um, but that's how the episode really starts. And and now it's just like, basically, when Lucy breaks is out of the vault, it kind of st- really sets you out on your journey. I feel like when you're thinking about this story, they are setting up a great, like, you're on his grand journey now. And Lucy is out walking through California, walking through the deserts, and it shows you the atmosphere of post-Fallout society. Everything's gone. Everything's destroyed. And when she's even chilling at night by a you know, by a fire, uh, a, a straight up dog the dog shows up, kills a cockroach, giant cockroach, giant cockroach and the scientist, yeah. scientist is like, "You clearly don't know what you're doing because you don't want to have a night a light out at night because giant cockroaches will come out and eat you." And that was one of the things I think I would, I would if I was going to say any more criticisms, more of those yeah. animal moments. You know, I feel like that's kind of something yeah. that Fallout was always most known for. That you just walk down the street. The abominations, yeah. Yeah, you walk down the street and then some abomination something. I, I fall out for used to give me nightmares of me walking down the street and then some oh some God. like horseshoe crab shows up and now I gotta fight a bunch of horseshoe crabs that are mutated and are trying to eat me. And I'm like, that that was horrendous, right? And, and and that would happen all the time playing the game. So I wish they they showed a little bit more of that because that was kind of one of the biggest things that is most most known in Fallout games. But they did a good job with that. And, and now we're getting to, uh, obviously, in the back to Maximus. And this is where I feel like the whole, you know, Brotherhood of Steel storyline started to get a little slower. Basically, like, it was just, you know, they're going to go by foot. Maximus is treated like crap by Titus. And now they get into this cave where they start to track down the scientists. And the cave has got some real radiation stuff in there. And they start fighting a giant bear. I thought right off the bat they're going to give us Death Claw, which I thought would have been hilarious if death call did show up but i saw a bear i was like all right well this is now another animal this is something different and right off the bat titus seems like the biggest bitch on the planet he's crying he's running away he gets tackled and i thought it was kind of funny i wish they did like the fallout moment of like slowing down time and zooming in like slow motion to the head of the of the bear but he one shots the bear wish that happens in the game that would have been fantastic but they one shot the bear bear dies they don't really show the wound that kills Titus, but Titus is is you reveal is Michael Rappaport, who is uh who is a bad actor but a comedian, and uh, he's just saying, "Oh, you're just you're it's all your fault. You're yeah. you're a bitch. Like, you're the, you'll know kill you. You are. They're gonna hang you." And it's just like that. How does this make any sense? Why he would be killed for you getting attacked? But so then Maximus, who has this, who has this like a, a feeling of the the knights as being this like heroes that saved him as a kid. He starts to realize that they're just a bunch of bitches, right? And and now he's like, you don't deserve to wear that armor and just lets him die, which I think is a pretty good like character moment for him to say, yeah, you care more about this this ide- ideology of these knights being more superior that you would let this dude die just so you can live in that armor and be that person. 
And I feel like that was the the good part, the good part with Maximus, because I feel like it was slowing down a little. Um, but now we get to like this is where the best part. Now we're getting into um, really the the Vault Dweller Lucy is getting into these outlaw towns, Philly, right? And this is like what the Fallout feeling, where you go into an outlaw town, there's a bunch of merchants, there's a bunch of people, outlaws that are there, and now you got to go like get information, steal stuff, whatever. Um, but along the way, man, there's a whole bunch of weird stuff. I, I feel like one of the weirdest things I saw was, uh, you know, Maximus does his first heroic act. He breaks up two guys fighting and then says, go on your way, sir. And he's like, you are, you are, a, you're, a, you're a renaissance man, sir. And just runs off. And he's like, man, he was just, he was fucking my chickens. And it was just like, like, <laughs> I just had to like, what the hell? what'd you just, what'd you just say? And I was just, uh, and he, no. It was, just some, it was just like those dumb like funny. I'm not gonna lie, that was yeah, funny. What, it was funny because you just don't uh, expect no. that to happen i was just like what <laughs> what and like so that like just dumb things like that just make you just like dude come on now like but i think i think phil the philly scene was a great one you're having a whole lot of different moments happen here the scientist gets there you know you get vault dweller kind of meeting with the, the merchant shop owner trying to find moldaver clearly no one likes vault vault dwellers they think that they're you know, pompous, you know, rich people that got away from it all while they all have to sit there and deal with the post fallout society. So they know they don't like her. When the scientist shows up, though, that's when stuff gets real because the ghoul is already waiting there for him, knowing that he's going to show up. And now he starts just clapping people. He shoots the, the foot off the scientist and he's like, I'm going to I'm going to kill you. I'm going to bring you with me I'm going to get that bounty so I can have a lifetime supply of drugs and all that. And then Lucy steps in like, no, you're not. You shouldn't do that. And then he's like, all right, what are you going to do? And then they have this whole fight scene of him doing exactly what you would think in a Fallout game, slowing down time, hitting precise points, and he's killing all these people. Great callbacks to the games. And eventually, you know, Maximus shows up in the T-60. And now we get a little bit of fight. Maximus shows that he has ability a little bit. And then, you know, he's also rough around the edges, so he makes some really dumb decisions. The ghoul is a lot more experienced than him. He's outwitting him. And then Lucy now is given the, the mission to get the scientist out of there and bring him to Moldaver. And if, you know, and Moldaver is the one that has him for it. her dad. Yeah, to really exchange the scientist for her dad, who mm -hmm. took hostage in the first episode. And the episode ends with the scientist really obviously struggling. Right? He, he has no foot. And he says, hey, I just took a cyanide pill. Just take my yeah. head and, uh, you know, bring, bring what's in my head and you're all good. And so... You know, she's one of those just ignorant people. She's like, well, okie dokie. And then just cuts off his head. And that's how well, it is. She's very hesitant, but she has Yeah, no she choice. was very hesitant, but she realized, like, I need to do this. And all right. And then cuts his head off. And that's how the episode ends. And when we get to episode three, I think it does pick up. And this is the whole episode is just about the head, right? We need to secure the head. We need to find the head, whatever. And uh, I think when the key, so I'll just be, I'll summarize this one a little quicker. But the idea is that Lucy's bringing, bringing the scientist's head to the coordinates that they have. She has issues because now we're starting to see some of these like frog mutated animals that basically attack her and, and basically try to take the head, swallows the head and now she loses it. And at the same time, the ghoul is tracking her ass down, finds the dead body with with the uh, CX-404 and, and tracks her down all the way to uh, to the swamp. And and she's like, I lost it. And he's like, I know exactly. It's a, it's a gulper that took this thing, didn't it? And that's what I wanted to see in the beginning. I wanted to see more of these animals. Because there's so many mutated animals in Fallout that like, and they're always connecting to the environments that they're in. So now it's about he's got to go and and fish for this gulper using her as live bait. And at the same time, it's water gulper, I think. Was it? Like say it again. Gopa. I, gopa? I, I mean, I think whether I gulper, it's gopa, or gopa, it's gopher. it's either a gulper, gopa, gobber. It's a damn Uber, frog. Uber, frog. Uber, I don't, I don't know what it is. I thought it was a salamander. I have it, yeah. as, I have it down as a salamander. <laughs> it's basically, it's basically it's like a... It's thing that can swim as it is. Yeah, right, I, I, salamanders, a salamander. Sal salamanders don't swim, though. That's why I was like, it's got to be a frog. Hell yeah, salamanders swim, bro. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe it is maybe a salamander. Maybe it's a half-free salamander slash frog. Unless you know salamanders that have fingers for fruit. Hey, guys, they can call it a fish frog. Right? A fish frog. <laughs> so, so this fish frog basically now is is going after Lucy, that, so they can try to basically you know get get the head out of its stomach. He says, yeah, it takes like a few hours to actually digest anything, so we actually have a chance to get it out. 
In the meantime, Maximus gets a, a, a squire, right, as, as a replacement squire for him because he says, oh, yeah, the guy died honorably, whatever. And it was yeah, actually... The squire died. Yeah, so the squire died. So, Titus. yeah, he, now he's to be pretending to be Titus. And now they send in the, the bully guy to now be his squire. And, you know, oh, sort of full circle. Now he's he's the squire while, the other, while Maximus is the knight and, and all that. So they end up having their own kind of dynamic between the two of them where, you know, there's scenes that they kind of show, you know, like... Uh, you know, like he, I think this is more in the fourth episode, but there's some scenes that kind of show that dynamic between the two of them where Maxis is kind of treating him like a bitch now, like so he gets a little bit out of his system. Um, but you know, every single time, uh, the ghoul is trying to get you know, get this this fish frog to get take the bait, you know, now they have a full on fight with the fish frog, and and you know, it doesn't work, like she she basically swings the bag that the ghoul had to like you know, get hey, yeah, that has all of his drugs to get the gulper off of him and it breaks all of his drugs and now he's pissed he's like well now we got to go do other other things to get these drugs because i'm gonna you know he doesn't say what happened but he's like we got to go do our side mission now because because you're an idiot and so he takes her and goes to go do this side mission and at the same time now max shows up with, with you know with uh, with his boy and now they have their own brawl they have some good fights between him and the fish frog his friend actually saves him shoots a big old rocket into the side of the uh of the frog's chest and then he's about to eat him and then they pull out they yank out the entire tongue of the monster and it rips out the head and then they like we got we finally got the head and then it ends with the ghoul walking with lucy basically into the desert to go and you know basically do whatever this side mission is and you can see that he's getting he's going to california and the ghoul has to go and basically eat another ghoul to, to stay alive or to stay unferal because he sees one of his friends who is feral who has drugs in him he's like well i'm gonna have to eat this guy now and uh you either can you know live like a wastelander or you can live like yourself and and see how that's treated right and that's that's kind of how it really ends on that point and then that final episode is really i think the well, best I mean, then we got the vault 33 um, uh, well, they, they have the what the, uh, the yeah we're talking about the Vault Thirty Three kind of yeah, politics. Yeah, who I thought was a useless character. All of a sudden, now they're trying to get a new leader. You got yeah. a couple people uh, vying for the new head of the vault, um, while Lucy's dad is captured, and they're talking about what they do with the prisoners for the raiders, and you know they're trying to decide what to do with them. And Norman says to kill them. Um, so that was an, another interesting thing um besides the one of the raiders showing uh forgot which which head his butthole um <laughs> but that was a funny uh another funny exchange when they were giving a speech to the rest of the vault people and they're like you know they told me something interesting and he's like yeah he showed me his butthole <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of screwed up uh <laughs> it made me like kind of say like you know that that is something that that they didn't really jump into a lot of the games they didn't really talk about like hey what happens if like the you know these vaults go crazy and they kill each other like sometimes you see some of that in in the the areas that you're traveling to in the games but you don't really see a lot of like story development of that as much i know in some vault fallout games they kind of jump into a little bit more information but you know they could have done that a little bit more in the games which is which is cool it gives you another perspective on kind of what's going on and in the next, last episode of this first half it jumps into like elections like they're going to be doing elections soon they have the campaign posters and, and all that stuff with the, with the vault dwellers and each leader is shape a bitch like they don't they don't actually know what they're, what they're doing they they are you know i think one of the funniest scenes was uh was i think it might have been in the beginning of fourth episode where they're like uh hey you know i got a something to problem there's a problem uh, i want to talk to you talk to you guys usually the old head head leader used to talk about it in private and he's like no just just tell everybody we're all we're all here and he's like well the water the water rotators broke and the no, radiators <laughs> broke and uh you know oh, we yeah, can't we can fix it he's like, oh, they just, they just pour, pour water in it he's like well we don't have any water so which means we're, we're probably gonna run out of if water in two months and we're all gonna die and they're like and he just walks away i was like wow that's uh that's a pretty it's just such a like stupid all but right. like at the same time like wow, you guys really suck at this, don't you? And it was just kind of like one of those moments where you're like, it, it shows you the funniness, but then shows you like the peril that some of these groups are in at this point in time. And when we get to the, the last of these episodes, I think it does a great job of really focusing a lot more on the ghoul, right? Because the whole episode is called Ghouls, uh, uh, the, the Ghouls. And it kind of goes into 
the issues that he has and you know how what ghoul life is like and the the problems that could persist because while maximus and you know his boy are basically traveling they have the head now you know they, they start to learn a little bit more about him where you know he used to the, his squire used to get bullied all the time he's like well you know then maximus came around and i said hey, you know what maybe if i bully him then they'll stop bullying me and it did it worked and i was like i feel bad because you know i he's not a bad guy like he's just i kind of just did that so i didn't get bullied anymore and and it was kind of like that moment where you're like hey i thought this guy was just a douchebag but you know there's a little bit more to this character the dynamics getting a little bit more interesting between the two and we all know that at some point max is going to be revealed so it's going to be interesting when we get to the second half of the season um but it really a lot of this episode is going to revolve around lucy and the ghoul where the ghoul transfers lucy for in exchange for drugs and basically going to sell her off to get drugs in exchange so that he survives and she gets into this facility uh we have this the robots one of the robots basically is a surgeon he used to be like basically these robots are like butlers or like surgeons back in the original time period before the fallout happened and you know he's talking nice well oh, like i can't believe the ghoul did that he's such a douchebag like i can't and then he like he's like well i'm just gonna harvest your organs and he's just what and then <laughs> knocks her out and then he's gonna bring her to go harvest the organs and then you find out that raiders are controlling this base they have a bunch of ghouls that are in like storage that they're going to harvest their organs at some point. They have, uh, they're going to harvest Lucy and they have a whole bunch of drugs in their facility. And basically like while she's knocked out, she's trying to get out of this whole issue. You know, she basically has to fight her way, which I thought was interesting how they did that. Basically using every, every item in that room as a means to, to hit the robot enough to get out of the situations in time and then uses the robot as basically as a bargaining chip to get these guys to let her go and to also let the ghouls go. But she's also ignorant to this whole thing where she doesn't realize that feral ghouls will eat everything, right? So meaning that you, them, everyone, right? So she unlocks all the doors and right away, the feral ghouls just charge after the raiders. They destroy both of them pretty quickly. And then she, and then they just run off. Like, I mean, which is like, pretty pretty hilarious and then she ends up having to kill one ghoul which you knew this was a big moment for her because she's you know she's ignorant she's not really trying to kill people she's been using a knockout a knockout gun this whole time and when the whole time that we were watching this i was saying use a gun like you're you're trained you know how to use one just use it and in this moment she has to use the gun to basically save herself kills the ghoul and then she takes takes some of the drugs and brings it outside to the ghoul outside. He's as he's passed out, almost dying. She like throws him some drugs, and uh, you know I I live by the ghoul the rule, and I think it was kind of funny that like she's starting to see this transformation as a character, being that ignorant, peaceful person to now becoming like a wastelander, which he said that she needed yeah, to become. Yeah, but keep, you know, like she could have killed him and let him die, but she actually kept the gold in her style. Mm -hmm. which was doing the right thing so it wasn't a full wastelander move she's like yeah. saying you know I'm, I'm still above you know the wastelander you know stuff so i thought that was pretty good that she still kept in character but she probably does have to be a little more savage yeah and oh, yeah. She, you can tell that she has like that attitude with her and she's just like a golden rule like mother effer like and then walks out walks off and he takes the drugs and then he goes into the into the facility where he finds all the drugs and he's like getting drunk off of these drugs and he's gonna start like collecting them but one of the best scenes of the, it was the last part because it the, throughout this this episode that's actually started off with basically going into his backstory where he was an actor he was in hollywood and you know he does this scene where he's a cowboy and he's like he, you know he's gonna kill his rival and uh you know they have they basically have him a gunpoint and he's just like do what do i need to kill this guy like you know I, I feel like there's no reason for me to kill him and this might have been like in part of episode three but it kind of connects to this episode anyway where you know the director is i thought it's funny because in the 50s like that was the thing they're like yeah the writer he got fired because he was a communist he's like, oh man i really liked him he was a good guy and 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 then he's like you know what you just gotta shoot him in the head he's like but that i, I guess so I, but i rather and you get a little bit more backstory into his family but it's kind of funny because it shows you the character development of 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 the ghoul where he was this guy that you know was well, was kind-hearted and had these feelings like i'd rather not do that but i guess was we'll, guess we'll do so and it also connects to why he hates the vault so much because he was also 
paid actor for Vault Tech to advertise for the vaults. And one of the, the you know, Vault Boy, the logo, giving the thumbs up was actually based off of his advertisements mm -hmm. that he would do for Vault Tech, which, which is why like he can't, can't stand Vault Tech, can't stand the Vault Dwellers. He was shooting out the signs of the of Vault Boy doing the thumbs up because he hates them, right? And it's kind of like that idea, that transition. And the last scene, he plugs in the movie, and it's ironic because it's, it's actually the same scene from that, from that uh, you know, one he did, and it shows that he does kill the guy in the movie scene, uh, and it kind of shows you like you know, like it's almost like he's changed as that person, like being in someone he's like enjoying watching this this episode, and you know, and all the background it's got all like this '50s tunes popping, and you're like, this is literally like the atmosphere that you want with this type of stuff. Now I I, I had to skip over some things. There's a lot of smaller details that happen in this this episode but just for time purposes i had to jump through a lot but what did you guys think about this, these these first four episodes because i feel like it, i can't do it enough justice by just giving just going over your plot scenes but i want to get you guys opinions first hockey what would you feel about this first four episodes about any key things you that stuck out to you that you felt like you really were like yeah that was a great that was a great part yeah, I'm just gonna just for time purposes here. I'll just keep it uh, kind of like one thing I'm gonna highlight per episode. On episode one, I thought uh, pretty much right off the bat, crazy, crazy fight scene uh, between Lucy and uh, you know the Vault 32 Ravenger uh, that she was supposed to marry. Um, and we're talking about gore. I mean, they show you right off the rip um, how gory this show is gonna be when she uh, smashes his face with that glass. Um, moving to episode two, um, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of Michael Rappaport, you know, I, I know people are, he can be funny at some points, uh, but I thought, you know, his scene was pretty funny, um, kind of gets to show you, you know, who can be under the armor and, and, you know, who you can be under the armor as well, you know, so, um, you know, the, I, I forgot the guy's name, uh, the, the Esquire that took over yeah. the guy's armor, but he, yeah, yeah man, made a choice. Yeah, you know, he, he made a choice and, you know, he, uh, you know, had to fight a, a few demons here or there, but it seems like he, he might be making the correct choice and, and be less of a wussy than, than Michael Rappaport was. But uh, moving to episode three, man, that gulper, I, I thought was really cool. Like Marsman said, I wanted to see more of that stuff. Um, I'm hoping in the next four episodes we do see a lot more of those crazy animals. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to still put it down as a, just a, like a salamander. Uh, monster but we can say fish frog you know um <laughs> but yeah episode four that lucy ghoul organ store kind of scene was great uh you know she prevailed uh <clears throat> ended up giving uh, him the drugs at the end was pretty cool uh but and i want to know what happened to vault 32 that's gonna yeah. be a big surprise uh <clears throat> you know it's uh after they went into it and then saw how long they've kind of been uh, alone there and, and uh, you know, dead for you know, over two years, it's going to be a big surprise on what happened, you know, how the Ravagers got in there and, and uh, you know, what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, Angelica, what did you feel about these uh, this first half? Yeah, I'll do similar with Aki because you guys kind of addressed the biggest things, but I tell you what, I'll, I'll go to a different angle. I think Lucy is the best character we're seeing in the first four episodes. I really love how they bring the naiveness to her and that you kind of can see her starting to grow. But without completely changing herself in the first four episodes, she still kept the golden rule when she could have just off the ghoul right there um, and let him turn feral. So but that was a really big moment from the first episode to the fourth. The action is super gory um, if you like that kind of stuff. And what is funny is it's super gory, yet they bring this dark humor and the music makes it like a less serious uh, moments so it's such an interesting uh, atmosphere that they have created and it, it really is if you are new to the fallout it'll be such a unique atmosphere uh, for you but I've got to say what guys this vault 32 storyline has really picked up I thought Norm was gonna be which is Lucy's brother was gonna be a massive waste of character when we first saw him but I tell you what that story plot is raising up the ranks and when he went into into, into vault 32 well first he was sparked by the raiders saying you know what you did to vault 32 was unforgivable and he says you know innocent you murdered a bunch of innocent people and he says I don't know about vault 32 but they were definitely weren't innocent and he goes sneaks in there and he sees a lot of mayhem people killing each other um you know the the head of the vault walled off and he's dead in his room and sprayed on the wall says we know the truth so what the hell happened 
in that vault is going to be a really interesting thing I'm looking forward to in the next four episodes. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing is that this if you're new to Fallout, this is exactly what the games are, are like. There's a lot of messed up things that happen. Maybe a little less whacking off, but I mean, I think that... that, or that butthole showing. Or but... butthole showing and stuff like that, but it's definitely a weird game when it comes to those types of moments of dumb things that happen with dark humor, and there's a lot of violence, but that, that feeling of like there's a lot of hopelessness and there's a lot of you know, like wastelanding like and people doing messed up things. That's kind of what Fallout's all about. And I feel like they did a great job with the atmosphere and they kept up with the the background of what Fallout's all about. Right. And I feel like that's something that you gotta give Amazon a lot of credit for because they did a fantastic job when it comes to depicting this. And I'm excited for the next four episodes and I might even have to watch one, you know, very soon, like to, like tonight, if I really just to keep it going. Oh yeah, um, the next four right yeah, after. Next, and that and yeah. that's kind of the that's gonna be kind of us transitioning out of here. Uh because we will be talking about the next four episodes in the next video. We're hoping to do it in this coming week so that we can get, you know, give you a little bit more perspective about the whole show as a whole. Uh but if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Make sure you also, if you want to support us. Hit the join button, become a member of the Mars Band crew, and you can also join us on our Discord, which is free. And there's also paid membership with little tiers and a little goodies that added onto there. So you can you can join our membership there to, to also get special perks. But until next time, this is Mars Band signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>